Buenos días. I can't hear you. Buenos dias. I really enjoyed the panel by my uh, colleagues. Um, you know, they're, all these folks are really impressive um, people, individuals, colleagues in my industry that I highly respect. And it was such a, such a great panel. So to them, um, and I just love how Monica Hill keeps getting shout outs. You know, I love that. So um, this panel is, I think, going to be um, a really special one because of the topic we're going to discuss, which is, you know, it's been, it's been, um, you know, topic uh, of the, of the last few days, which is representation, right? And Claudia has done such an, such an important job of bringing representation front and center in all aspects of American life, right? For, for Latinos. Um, but there's one place that I think is truly um, the place where if we're not represented, then we're, we're truly invisible, right? And that's in the media, right? That's in the media. And um, I have the privilege, I've, I've over the last few years, Claudia has, has asked me to, to moderate um, different panels, and I've really enjoyed it. We did one on music, um, which was fantastic, with Desmond Child and Erica Ender last year. We did one on culture um, with Don Francisco, Gabriela Barua from the Latin Grammys, um, Lorena Garcia, the chef, and we really went deep into culture. Well, this year we're going to go deep into media. And um, I'm privileged to have um, f three people that I respect, admire, and that are really blazing, have blazed trails and continue to blaze trails. The first one, and about f four years and three months ago, I got a call from a, my dear friend, Marielena Salinas. Um, to tell me something that I think pretty much at the time... Emma and I were the, and her family were the ones that knew it, which was that she had made the decision that after 30 years, she was going to step down from Noticiero Univision, from Univision Network News. And, um, you know, she, we talked and she said, amigo, um, you know, if you could help me with this process, because I, you know, I want this to, I want to do this the right way. And I want to leave Univision after 30 years, you know, the, on, on, on the right way. And she did it in such a professional, gracious, graceful way um, that day that um, four years ago today, four years ago today, she stepped down from Noticias Univision. My anniversary. It's, it's your anniversary. Make sure your mic is on, by the way. It's my anniversary. It's your anniversary. Four years. Four years. Of owning my own life in my own time. So, you know, we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, also, um, someone that i um, proud to say is a native Miami and like myself and Cuban American. We have two Mexican Americans here and two Cuban Americans here. Um, but uh, Cuban American like myself and just somebody again that have, uh, I've admired for years, um, watched his work when he was um, on television in Miami and then as his career has grown and today we're so proud to see him um, at NBC News. Um, you might have seen him on the Today Show this morning. He has his own show now this, um, on NBC News Now, and that's Tom Yamas. Great Thank to you have you here. <laughs> Emma Carrasco, at her young age, um, is, is truly one of our community's um, people that um, has, have really cared about lifting the image of this community. Um, she marched with Cesar Chavez, back in the day. Um, she started her career in Los Angeles in public relations at Fleischmann Hillard. Um, she then um, worked at McDonald's, heading up multicultural communications and marketing at McDonald's, worked at Nortel Networks in a global uh, marketing role. I was privileged that the first five years of my agency, Republica Havas, she was uh, our executive vice president and truly helped us build the agency that we became, which now we're 15 years later. And um, years back, she came to us and said, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be moving to Washington and getting a, a new role as chief marketing officer at NPR. She then went on to become chief marketing po uh, officer at uh, National Geographic. And she's now senior vice president of corporate affairs at NBC News. <laughs> and the NBC Universal News Group. 
And she's helping Cesar Conde and the team there lead the 50% challenge with Claudia spoke to a little while ago. So we're going to speak to that in a minute. But Marilena, I want to start with you. When you, were, when you and Emma met back in L.A., you were a local anchor at KMEX. Uh, you first did radio, and then you were a local anchor at KMEX, Univision, Los Angeles, Canal 34. Um, you um, got, somebody said, this is the person that needs to be our network anchor, and um, you soon made it onto the network, right? And you were there for 30 years. You've covered every, every... Um, happening that's taken place in this country and the world, right, over the last 30-something years of career. Um, how does it feel to be the Latina that's most respected in this industry? How does, how does that feel? How, 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 how does that's that not for me to say. That's for you to say. No, but, thank you how, did, but, but how does, how does it feel when people way. like myself, you know, because that's earned, right? And we see you as that. The community sees you as that. You are respected. You are revered. How does it feel? No, I mean, thank you for saying that. But you know, I've always said um, to that point that I just happen to be, and I know Tom, um, you understand what this is. When we are journalists and we happen to be in front of the camera, we get a lot of the recognition. But really, we are just part of a team that really makes this happen. So you know, there's journalists who are seen and known, and there's others that maybe. Um, invisible to the audience, but yet they play a very important role. So I'm just really grateful that I had that opportunity and that um, when I started in KMEX, which was in the early 80s, I mean, we didn't even have uh, Univision. It was SIN. There was just a very small group of stations. So the network was very young and the Latino community was very young. And I do want to talk about Spanish language media for a second, if you allow let's me. Do, because let's I know do it, because I want to talk Monica, about... Yeah, when Monica You've had a front row seat at seeing the 62 million... Yeah, exactly. You know, from, from 14 million to... to right, right. To 60-something, uh, 60 62 right. million Latinos. Right. But I think that we have played an important role in the growth of the Latino community, and the Latino community has played a vital role in the growth of Spanish language media. So we sort of grew hand in hand. Now, a lot of people accuse Spanish language media, especially... When in the news part of advocacy journalism. But the role that we have played is to be an advocate, but to be an advocate because there was no one else advocating for the Latino community. Because we had a community that had needs, that had interests, and no one to provide those needs and interests. So we knew that there was a social component to, to the type of journalism that we would be doing then. I mean, I understood that early on. That's why, you know, the empowerment of the Latino community became my, my mission and my passion very early on in, in, in the early 80s. So that's why, as Monica said, Spanish isn't going anywhere. But the community has changed. We're not the same anymore. We have evolved. And it, we're not, the growth in the Latino community is no longer only immigrants coming in, but birth. Uh, so many young people here. So the community has, has assimilated, the community has acculturated, uh, the community is American, uh, a big chunk of it is American, and the majority are bilingual. So that's why, yes, the role of Spanish language media will be important, but like you said in the beginning, it's very important that we are seen and heard in mainstream media. And when I say seen and heard, it's not just do we want to hire people that are Latino so you have a name and you have a face, because we do have a lot of that. And I'm very proud when I see so many Latinos at ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN. But one thing is to have a face and a name, and another thing is to have a voice. Our, our story is being told, and I think that's where the biggest challenge is when it comes to mainstream media. Well, on that, I'm going to come back to you, Marielena, but that, um, Tom, I mean, I think for a lot of us to see you first on ABC News um, as the anchor of World News Tonight um, weekends and, and, um, and now to see you on NBC News, obviously, it, again, it's a point of pride for, for, for our community. Um, how do you feel as one of, how do you feel of the responsibility you have, right, as a Hispanic American in this country, in mainstream media, to make sure that you are um, representing your community, covering your community, telling those stories. Uh, I know you you, ha you have a segment now on your new on your new um, program on NBC News now, where you cover the Americas. It is crazy sometimes that most network newscasts don't cover Latin America in the network news. 
they will have stringers, and this isn't, I'm not getting controversial because I know you want, but they will have stringers in different parts of the world, but not in Latin America, right? You're starting to change that. Can we speak to that? No, it's a great question. Uh, first, I, I, I want to say thank you to the Hispanic Leadership Summit and to Claudia for having this, and, and to everyone here for taking time out to, to listen to us and to kind of workshop and, and figure out solutions. And of course, to Maria Elena, who, I mean, is a trailblazer, right? It's like, I was uh, on stage with Savannah Guthrie, Al Roker, Craig Melvin today, but now I'm on this stage with you. Yeah! <laughs> um, to your question, so, right, so, so I head up a show called Top Story on NBC News Now, and it's a streaming newscast. Streaming is the future, so it's the, the main focus. One of the main focus is of NBC News. We think this is sort of the, the moment in time in media when streaming is about to take over, sort of when radio lost to television, right? We think this is one of those pivotal times. So we've launched a very ambitious newscast at NBC News. It's called Top Story with Tom Yamas. So I've been working in, in mainstream media on the English, English side since about 2000. I started when I was 15, interning in, in Hialeah, which is a, a great section of Miami, working at Telemundo. Yeah. Give it up for Hialeah. Um, and, and so, but when I realized, when I came over to, to English language and working my entire career, except in Miami, because in Miami you cover Cuba and, and issues in Latin America a lot, but on the national side, being at, at places like ABC and even NBC and MSNBC, and this is no secret, our community was not being covered for one reason or the other, right? You can say, I cover the border. Well, you're covering the border. You're not covering all of our community. And when I say community, I don't just mean people who live in Latin America. I mean your neighbor. I mean your uncle. I mean maybe the guy that your sister just married who's Puerto Rican, right? And so... I started thinking about this and I said, there's no reason if I have an hour of news that I can't cover that community, my community, right? So we came up, thank you. So we came up with this idea called the Americas and it's stories of Latin America, stories of the Caribbean, but also stories about Hispanics in the US. And so we cover all types of things. We cover the presidential election in Chile. We covered the rainforest being drilled in Ecuador. We covered women rights issues being talked about in Mexico, one of the most Catholic countries in the world. We talk about Cuba. If they want to have a CBS special on Adele, which is beautiful, why can't we have a special about Jay Balvin? Why can't we have a special about <laughs> Bad Bunny, the most streamed artist in the world? So we're, we're kind of having these conversations and I don't think we're talking in circles, but I just think we're, we're sort of speaking in the echo cham chamber. We know the problems, right? So the question is, how do you make a difference? We can hope that there's change, right? I remember in 2000, Newsweek came out with the year of the Latino. It was Ricky Martin living La Vida Loca. Salsa had overtaken catch up. You remember this? I was working for and, Gloria and Emilio Estefan. Yeah, and everyone was like, oh, this is the year of the Latino. I've seen the year of the Latino like maybe 20 times already, right? Here's the news flash. I'm going to break some news here. There's never going to be the year of the Latino, right? We, we, it is our year every year. And on top of that, we don't need anybody to tell us that it's our year, right? So, so the, the, the show's called Top Story with Tom Yamas. Um, since I get to decide which stories are there, I decided it's time to tell these stories. So every night, we're telling these stories. Yeah. Round of applause for that. Tom, when you were when you were in um, in Tokyo, yeah. you 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 also obviously can report in Spanish, right? So right. You reported for Telemundo from, on the Olympics, right? It was tough. Um, <laughs> and as as I don't know if anybody here, but I guess you guys all, all do know this because, you know, speaking Spanish fluently is one thing. Speaking to your family and to your friends, there's a certain range of vocabulary, right? When you start to do business, it starts to get a little tricky. When you start to report on a triathlon, it's <laughs> like I, I, I would basically call the Telemundo office and I said, this is my script, please translate, because we're never going to get on the air if not. So I learned things about like javelin and the shot put. I mean, it was just words we never used. But look, I, I'm glad I, my parents raised me speaking Spanish because I was able to offer that to them. Um, and I always tell people like, you know, a thing I learned a long time ago, when I ask, you know, what's the language of business? You may say, oh, it's English. Some people may say maybe it's Mandarin. Some people may say it's Japanese. The language of business is the language of the customer. And in America, the customer speaks English and Spanish. Yeah. So speaking of Spanish, Marilena, um, you know, you had this extraordinary career on, on, um, on Univision. 
And, uh, you know, I remember that day four years ago today. Emma and I were both there on the set with you and your colleagues and your family and your co-anchor, Jorge, when you signed off, you know, and it was a surreal moment to, wit to be there with you, you know, five feet from the anchor desk as you, you know, as the cameras went off. How did that moment feel for you? Liberating. Yeah. Um, I mean, yes, it was sad because after 37 years total from when I started in KMEX, it, you know, it, was, um, it was tough because you build relationships. You build relationships with the people that you work with and you build relationships with the audience. And, but, you know, I had my little list of, you know, pros and cons and, and definitely the, the pros for taking this step were, were very important. And I know that Emma was a big part of it and, and, and so were you, Jorge. Um, but... You know, yeah, I, I think it was great, and there's so many reasons why I did that, and you know that, that there's so many reasons. It's not easy to, you know, get out of your comfort zone and take such but a big step. People used to ask me, so why are you leaving after 37 years? And I said, why shouldn't the question be why are you still there after 37 <laughs> years? And I think I just felt like I needed, you know, some personal growth. Well, let's speak to that, because I want to speak to kind of the next era, right? And, um, you know, you've, you serve on, on boards, um, you've done a lot as an independent journalist. You've covered many things over the last four years. You've, you you um, had your uh, program on ID. Um, uh, you also, um, which was excellent, you also uh, have been a contributor for CBS News. Right. Um, tell us about that experience. Okay, so on that long list of things I wanted to do, one of them was... I want to tell the Latino story, and I want to tell the Latino story at, in any forum, no matter how small, and no matter how big. Absolutely. So I did have an interest in working in mainstream media to tell some of these Latino stories, because even though you know, Spanish language media does a great job, after a while you feel like you're preaching to the choir and you need to get the message out there more. Now there's two reasons for that. Number one, because like I said before, the majority of Latinos are bilingual. So um, mainstream media is really losing out on a, on a huge audience that they could be attracting if only they told our stories. It, one of the reasons why sometimes Latinos gravitate towards Spanish language media is not only because of the language but because of the content. So if you're not getting content in, in, in English, then you, you know, you're not seeing yourself reflected there, you're just not going to go there. And then the other reason why it's not just attracting the Latino audience but also you know, creating that perception, perceptions are really important. And I know that you, you talked about studies that, that, the, that you guys presented yesterday, and I, I wasn't here yesterday, so I'm not sure what studies they were, but I do know one by the Hispanic, uh, Pew, Pew Hispanic uh, Research Center. And I remember um, asking, so what are the perceptions of, of mainstream America of Latinos, and they said, of, of uh, immigrants? They said, well, the ones that live near immigrants have a more positive perception of them than those who do not live with them. Then they really have a negative perception of them. So where does that perception come from? It comes from what they hear from politicians and what they see in the media. They don't know them. So I think they would be a, a, doing a great service to our democratic process if we just realize that we are Americans too. If mainstream media showed us as main players in, the, in, in our society, that's why I think it's, it's really important for us to tell our stories. And, and I know that there's a fine line there when you say, well, uh, we want to be a Latino community and we want to be mainstream. So what do we want to be? We want to be both. Absolutely. That's why I, I, when I worked at Univision, I remember they said, don't use the word mainstream because we're mainstream too. And it's true. I mean, we are. So what do we say? Los canales en inglés? No, well, let, so we just call it mainstream for the sake of calling right. it something. But I do think our stories uh, do need to be told. And whatever I can do to do that, and I, I was able to do that uh, a bit when I was a contributor at CBS. I really enjoyed that. But it is an uphill battle. Absolutely. It's an uphill battle, not only because Latino journalists want to show that we can do any, any kind of work, but then again, you know, we have a voice too, and Latino stories are just not being told. So they say, don't be pigeonholed. Well, guess what? I want to be pigeonholed because I want to tell Latino stories because Latino stories are not being told. So, round of applause for that. So, Emma, uh, you know, let's talk about NBC News, and the Univer NBC Universal News Group, and the 50% Challenge. 
you know, I know there's many more, so this isn't all of them, but, you know, I did spend a little bit of time thinking and looking into who are the Hispanics on, on English language, to not say mainstream, English language um, uh, television, right? And obviously, you know, w we, we have also some, some guys from Miami. Um, you've got Victor Oquendo at ABC News. You've got Gio Benitez there um, you, at CNN. You've got Gemma Costa, Ana Cabrera, uh, Boris Sanchez, right? Uh, Enrique Acevedo is over at CBS. Um, uh, and then at, at, at NBC News, MSNBC, um, in addition to, to, our, to our panelists here, you got Morgan Radford, who, um, Jose Diaz Balart, uh, Gabe Gutierrez, Alicia Menendez, Guar Benegas, uh, Carl Quintanilla, and others, right? Isn't it great to hear all those surnames on English language television? Isn't it fantastic? So Emma, let's talk about that because you, you all announced something pretty bold um, earlier this year, the 50% challenge. And this is that you a commitment that your newsrooms um, and your on-air product are gonna be 50% um, minorities, women and minorities. And um, you know, it was a big move and bold move by, by you, by Cesar Conde, by by your leadership, right? Um, you all, Cesar, made this announcement and it got a lot of press, right? It got a lot of press because it's a really bold move and I think it's something that was new, right, at NBC News. Um, and then following that, I know Rashida Jones, African-American um, woman, was named the head of MSNBC and other things have happened. Um, can we speak to that? And obviously you have Tom now in, in one of the main seats, but can we talk to that? Thank you so much, and hi, everybody. It's so nice to be here. Um, and thank you, Claudia, for, for organizing us. Uh, what an extraordinary program uh, you've created. You know, one of the reasons that I joined the NBC Universal News Group uh, just over a year ago um, it was really twofold. One was an opportunity to work with the first and only Latino leader of an English language news organization. And Cesar Conde oversees a portfolio that includes NBC News, MSNBC, and CNBC. That's extraordinary. <laughs> and as a result of having a Latino in that role, this bold ambition was declared for all of our newsrooms that we would be 50% women and 50% people of color. And why? Because of the data. The data that we've all talked about um, throughout uh, this conference. In 2020, we reached a tipping point where the majority of people 18 and under in this country were people of color. So if we wanted to ensure the future viability of our business from a workforce perspective, from an audience perspective, we had to do something that was extraordinarily bold, and we did it. And we are making extraordinary progress, and I'm, and I'm so proud. We've rallied around three Cs, which is exactly what Tom has described. We're focused on content, connection, and culture. And those three things allow us to ensure that we are covering all of the communities that we serve, that are the faces that you see across all of, our, all of our brands are representative of the communities that we serve. And there's never been a more important time to do that because the demographics, as we all know, are shifting, but there's also never been a more critical time to do it for the sake of journalism that has to be relevant and has to continue to uphold the tenets of our democracy. And How's so it going? We are, I can't see it, but we are, um, we are, we are doing, we've gone from, um, we've gone from, from 26 and percent people of color to 30.2 percent in less than two years during a global pandemic. Just real quick, if I can add to that, I, I was at ABC at the time and we had a text thread of, of a lot of the Latinos who worked at ABC News and we were discussing several issues and when that news broke, it rocked us because we, we were like, wow. Because first Caesar was the first, and, I, and you really, Emma, you were, you were kind of gracious about it, but it, it was such a huge moment because coming up in English language news, and Maria Elena knows this too, I, I mean, we've never had somebody at the top who is someone like us. It, it really is different. 
And he could have gone in there and been quiet and kind of said, oh, I'm going to do this, this. But he came out with this bold statement that rocked really our industry. It says a lot about his leadership. But it also tells us all what we have to do, right? The change starts with us, and we're seeing that with Caesar. Well, listen, I, I, I think that um, the only way, and Marissa now at the NFL, and the only way that we, as I was saying yesterday, rising tide lifts all ships, is for people like Caesar that are in leadership roles to be bold and to make those decisions, and I think he knows that and he's done it. And um, those of us that have known him for years and, and worked with him and respected him, I mean, it was also for us a big moment, right? Because it was like, you know, we're finally, finally coming into our own um, a, as, a, as a community. What our parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and so many leaders that came before us, you know, as they blaze those trails, and as I was saying yesterday, it's now our role to deepen that, right? And it takes people like him and like each of you. So as we close, because, um, Claudia, I know we're 45 seconds over. Um, 45? No, it looks like we still have 10 minutes. No, is that, am I looking at that? We're 40, 52 seconds over. Uh, <laughs> $52. But, um, no, I, I, you know, it's not every day you have these folks, uh, you know, up here, and I think it's just amazing. Marielena, to close, um, you know, where do you, see, where do you see this Latinos in mainstream media over the next five years? Do you, do you, see, do you see it... Do you see more of those surnames in key roles? Yeah, I, uh, I think we have a lot of surnames and we would love to see more surnames, but now I think the next step is to see our stories told. We have very deep roots in this country, probably the deepest roots, remember Spanish was spoken before English in, That's exactly in the US, right. and yet we're still treated as if we were foreigners in our own country and sometimes we act as if we were foreigners in our own country. So I see that the next step now is to have some of those Latino faces and names uh, turn into voices and, and, and stories of Latinos uh, to show that we are a very important part of this society. Uh, so that's where I see it in five uh, years. You know, I, was just I know, I'm going to keep knocking doors, and I'm going to keep insisting, and I'm going to keep on <laughs> nagging them, even if they get mad. <laughs> and by the way, it's news organizations across the country. This morning we were seeing that a colleague of ours when we worked together at Univision, Fernando Pizarro, was just promoted to senior editor at the New York Times. New York Times, awesome. I mean, which is wonderful, right? That's what we need. We need more Fernando Pizarros, more Tom Yamas, more Marilenas. So Tom, bring us home as we close. I mean, where do you see it the next five years? And understand that there's a lot of people writing on you and on your shoulders. Right. And that in your role, it's also, and I say this as you know, somebody, it's, 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 it's all of our responsibility to bring others along. And I know you've done that yeah. with people. Yeah. You know, and I would imagine you will continue to do I, that, right? Definitely. Two quick things on that point. Help at least one person in your company. If, if you're not helping at least one person, you're not doing something right. Somebody for sure helped you, so don't forget that. Second, the younger generation of Latinos, and somebody said it earlier, they're, they're so much more advanced than we are. I think part of the problem, and I saw this growing up in Miami and then working here in New York, we sort of got in our silos with the Latinos. The Mexicans were here, the Cubans were here, the Puerto Ricans were here. We gotta stay united. And, and the more that we are united, that we look at each other just like everyone else, the more power we'll have. And the example you need to look at for your company and for your life, really, I say it's funny, but it's true, is reggaeton music. And the reason why I say that is because reggaeton takes the best of all of That's our exactly music. Right. And they made one music, and they all collaborate. That's exactly Whether they're right. from Colombia or Puerto Rico, they're all together on the same tracks, and now it's become the most popular music in the world. Yes. Absolutely. Emma. Emma will have an you know, insider front row seat at, at watching the shift the next five years. All Where I, do you see all, it? All you can, see the 50% challenge? All I can reiterate is that this is our moment and we will not, we will not lose this moment. We will not. So, so on behalf of Claudia, we're all human and all of us, thank you. I mean, when I reached out to each of you, um, they immediately said yes. And uh, I know Tom, you came straight from the Today Show where you're on the air this morning. Thank you for saying yes, Marilena. Thank you for flying in for this. Emma, um, thank you. Um, it, um, this is a really important moment we're living, and um, let's continue to support these folks. And when you know of great people in your local communities, great reporters, great anchors, great editors, great writers, send them to Emma. 
That's really important because it's important that we, like we were saying yesterday, as we were doing the mapping, we got to do the mapping on the talent side too. Please send folks to Emma because it's important that they're aware of who's out in the community and send them to Maria Elena and to Tom too because, because they have friends at other networks and, and ev you know, rising tide lifts all ships. So again, thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Jorge. And thank you, Claudia, thank for you. putting this together.